Hi everyone, uh, this is my first podcast. It's a very exciting. It's going to be called Lewis on the Couch with. Dot dot dot. So anyone I can rope in to sit on the couch with me and speak for say, 20 minutes to an hour or so. Uh, my first person is a great friend of mine called Matt Jaffa and he works for the Federation of Small Businesses. Uh, members organization and they offer a bunch of services they lobby the government they do some really cool stuff uh, i really enjoyed my chat with him and i hope you do too hey it's lewis welcome to the podcast enjoy our conversations anytime anywhere cool and we're live hello hi mate thank how are you? you good how are you i'm all right thanks thanks for coming in pleasure what do you think about my office it's nice. It's it's changed somewhat since I last came to see you about four or five years ago. Oh yeah. I think I came and met lunch for you for lunch or something. Oh yeah. But it's, uh, the last. Yeah. I think it was the last place. Yeah. No, but it's nice. Yeah. It's very nice. The office group very very good. Um, yeah. Wish you well to work here. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. So we've got a little couch. Mm. We've got a drinks fridge. Yep. Although you rejected the beer. Yeah. yeah this time of day definitely. <laughs> Cup of tea's fine. Fine. Lovely cup of tea. <laughs> so yeah. Thanks for joining. Me. Do you want to tell everyone? <clears throat> A bit about you, yeah. FSB. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I mean, I um, I work as you as you already know for the Federation of Small Businesses. Um, I head up the kind of the London um, external affairs that we do across the London region. So it could be any day lobbying the the GLA, the Mayor's Office. We can be engaging with our seventy odd uh, members of Parliament in London, and we also do the uh, the press and public affairs. How's the new mayor it? compared to Boris? Um, they've got different. You know, adv- you know, different particular positives and negatives. Um, I would say <laughs> Boris is, uh, you know, he's very good at the whole, you know, chat, 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 chat <laughs> as you do in meetings. Whereas, uh, you know, Sadiq is a real details kind of mayor, as you can see, you know, details. But um, they're very different in, in characters, but, but both uh, um, very strong at selling the message of London, which is good. Um, Ken was before my time, so I haven't got the, oh, uh, the yeah, knowledge yeah, of that, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, but um, no, it's, nice. it's, it's good. It's a good, you know, it's been two years now that, that Zadig's been in, in, in charge. Um, he never got to rename the uh, bikes, did he? No. It's just, still just, a Boris, still Boris bike. It's always going to be a Boris bike, isn't it, really? Yeah. But you've just got Santan there written all over it now. But um, That's true. Um, no, it's, uh, it's good. But, I, you know, we also do, you know, as, you, as, you, as you already know, we do um, lots of engagement. We do lots of events. Um, across we've got about seven thousand members across London. Nice. So uh, all it's all small businesses. All small micro businesses, mainly fewer than like ten employees. So really small businesses. Is that the definition of a micro? If micro is less yeah. than ten, small is less than fifty. So you're talking about ninety nine percent of the economy is made up of small businesses, um, and that gets oh, lost. Cool. It gets lost a lot of that in terms of the public. You know the, the whole term SME. You know you can have an SME that's defined as one person business or it's two hundred and forty nine, and it's. It's a it's a complete. Well, it's a medium business to unfortunate. Yeah, people. but the yeah. term SME is always you know floated around, but it doesn't you know you can you speak to a business that has taken on its first member of staff or a business that's already got two hundred and forty eight members of staff. It's a you know it's a complete difference. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how governments of the past have viewed it. And so most people in the UK work for a small or medium sized business. They, well, yes, um, around fifty percent work in an SME. Fine, um, right. Fifty sixty percent, and the rest are working large businesses. But it's. It's the smallest businesses, those you know, micro businesses, to take on the extra apprentices. Those are the ones that we need to be supporting in the economy because they're the ones more likely to employ staff, but just don't have the resources to be able to do so. So you're finding that people are like take on apprentices quite a lot now. Well, actually, some some data that's coming out now is that there's, actually there's been a drop in the number of SMEs taking on apprentices. Oh really? Um, it's still very hard for for businesses because. You know, to set up an apprentice in a, in a small business, micro business, you're talking thousands of pounds and you, you don't necessarily have the... Is that not refunded? There's a bit of, you know, uh, support in terms of training, but, te- you know, there's there's no real, you know, incentive financially wise to taking on that person. So it's a, it's a leap in the dark. And if it's your first member of staff, again, there is that concern and the support's not there. So we need to find ways, we, you know, we're lobbying for, you know, a kind of businesses like yourself, small businesses having a kind of incentive where it'd be two, three thousand pounds to take on the apprentice, particularly 16 to 25 year old, um, because it's it's small businesses are really struggling in terms of the cost of doing business in London. And that's that's what we're focusing on. Interesting. But they are they're che- I guess they're cheaper to take on than a normal employee. They are. But that's, you know, small businesses want to take on, you know, they're, they're keen to take on apprentices, um, but they just don't have the skill or they don't have the kind of the HR 
a backup that, say, a large business has or a medium-sized business has to take on that person. And so the larger and medium-sized ones are taking on more apprentices. They're more likely at the moment to take yeah, yeah. on those apprentices. Yeah. But we need to find a way to encourage small and micro businesses to, yeah. to take on these the apprentices. Because it's, it's, it's not just beneficial to the apprentice, it's beneficial to the business. It, it, it gets you new skills, gets you new talent, gets you, you know, things in like digital arena that you'd never thought of, and it actually makes you more competitive. No, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Our friend Toby, yep. a healthy yeah. vending company, yeah. a little good shout plug, out. Good plug, good uh, plug. He took on an apprentice, mm -hmm. um, which, which, which apparently was really good. Yes. Yeah. But there's a lot of planning that goes in. It is. Training, it is. proper structure, um, but it's really valuable. It'll be interesting to see over time if less people go to uni and they start doing, and it's either more, um, more apprentices, apprenticeships. There's more, training. there's more like higher degree apprentices that are, you know, taking place now. More of these, yeah. you know, in particular in financial services, you know, a lot of that accountancy, you know, a huge amount of high level apprenticeships. And, you know, why wouldn't you think about going down that route if you were going to... Because it's still, it's still, it's still seen as probably it is better party. to go to university. True, but again... But it's expensive. It is, but that's the thing. You know, if, if I was thinking about, you know, university again, the, the, you know, the high cost, you'd, you'd, think, you'd think twice, wouldn't you? If but you I knew... think, and I haven't got the stats on this, but I think, I mean, the MBA stuff... Is, is being squeezed now. Because an MBA is close to 100 grand investment and you don't actually get the highest salary or return. Mm. So I think applicants, or correct me if I'm wrong, but I think applications for MBAs are going down. Mm. Again, not one with, I, I know about, but, no. it's, uh, but with it degree, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it's interesting cost. though. But I mean, some jobs you have to have a degree. You do. You want to be you a do. scientist, you've got to do science. Isn't it? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, you know. But it's it's a worthwhile thing to think about going down the apprenticeship route. Hundred um, percent. So that's you know it's one of the things we're continually lobbying the government on to make it easier for smaller micro businesses to take on the apprentice. And then to so the main the main issues prior uh, cost. It's cost. It is mainly, yeah. and that's the you know particularly businesses that you've got coming down the line. You've got you've got to pay staff like auto enrol them into pension schemes. You've got your high cost. It's somewhere here where we're sitting right now. The the kind of the, the high cost of commercial space and rents and rates. They're eating up your your t your, your your profitability. Where are you find that extra money to be able to take on a you know young person, and that's that's where we need to be able to support them. Whether it be through you know, things like national insurance reductions for employers, you know incentives to take on you know grants to take on uh, apprentices. We need to be thinking in that in that way to make it easier to take on uh, staff. Yeah, agree. Mm. Agree. I mean, you've got how many staff have you got here at the moment? So six of us. Six of us. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. All. Like part time, full time, or what kind of business? There, uh, five are permanent, mm -hmm. and one is part time. Well, okay. And we've had a bit more. We've had a bit less. Um, and I think one one of the things that our members tell us is that things like employment issues that's one that can be a big stumbling block for a lot of small businesses that puts them off because they hear about things in the press regarding things like employment tribunals or you know how we can make our staff more effective or you know thinking about self-employment rather than you know employment and so it's kind of it's but the good thing about the uk yeah. um is you can try people mm. right so um i mean for, so for the employer you can take someone on and uh, obviously you don't even unless you discriminate, but you can get rid of anyone for anything within the first two years if they're not working if out. Not as working long as you don't course. discriminate. No, no, that's the main point. Uh, as opposed to say France, mm. where you can't. So, so the so the effect of that here is that people are businesses are able to try people, mm. which is great. Yeah. And if they do well, it's great, and they're not so tied in for a long term financial mm. risk, um, which is not the case in say France. Yeah. I mean, then again, that's a lot of the reasons why we have a, a kind of the FSB small plug while I'm at it, um, a legal advice line is that it's free for any small business that joins us, whereby if you've got issues regarding employment or if you've got issues regarding contract law, anything legal in your business, you can phone that legal advice line and they, they support that's you cool. through that. So it's kind yeah. of, that's one of the, the main areas where people join the FSB and why we've got such a you know, nice. big, big base of 170,000 members. What are the other key issues that small businesses are facing? Um, I mean, in terms of things like commercial space and business rates, those are the ones that are really hitting. And rates uh, have gone up, haven't they? Rates have gone up. They went up last year with the new the revaluation, and now from April the first, you know, we're going to see those rates going up even higher. Three point five percent increase across across the board. Wow! Um, just in London, across the UK. All oh, right. Um, but you're going to, you know, we've now got a situation where thirty three percent of all the business rates. Um, are coming from London going into the, the Treasury. So 8 billion of the, the 25 billion take is coming from London. But wow. um, 
it's a huge, and it's not, not as many businesses paying into that. So the, the concern is that small businesses in London are, are, are faced with a, um, a real uh, twin threat of not just commercial property um, affordability problems, but business rates that are stifling them and stifling their ability to grow and making them think, do we go further outside of this kind of a zone one area? And that's the fear we start losing micro business in the centre of London. Are you finding that some of your members don't actually need an office? So with technology now, um, I mean, we've just cut the cords to our desk phones. Right. So we've got, um, so our phone's on our laptop. Um, it's a, there's an app on our smartphone. So, so our guys can work anywhere in the world. Um, you know, O2O a number, um, it's brilliant. But it, what, it, what, it, what it means is that if we, didn't, we don't actually have to have an office. I mean, a lot of firms are talking about being uh, like virtual global firms, borderless firms. Mm. Um, so I, think a lot of, I think a lot of uh, businesses think about that, but I think a lot of them say, like, even if they, they're getting their staff to work, you know, remotely on a day, maybe if there's a, a strike in, the, in London or if there's um, problems in terms of, you know, communication problems in, in the office where they have to work from home. The problem you've got is that you setting up from home is a broadband issue. It's a um, kind of an issue regarding sensitivity of data. Um, broadband is broadband. so bad in the city. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a nightmare. You'd think, you know, yeah. being the, the, you know, the mecca and being in the capital city that we would be um, leading in this area, but we, we don't. We have, you know, pockets, particularly on the east side of London, in the east central part of London, probably around here, that it's just, an, it, it's dreadful and you just wouldn't expect it. Ever. The internet is a joke around here. Right. The biggest complaint, I think, from all of my employees is the internet. And that's that's a real in central burst. London it's a great by America. the Bank of England, and you can see one of your members of staff actually agreeing with you right now as you say that. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, it's, it's crazy. It's, it is. It really is. Um, you know, we talk about that we need to be thinking about being a one gigabyte city. We're struggling with, you know, speeds of five megabytes per second. Yeah. In central London, and you know, we're we're rapidly you know losing ground on our our international competitors true. as a result of broadband. That's no, true. But back to uh, back to cost of. Um, like rent and stuff, you can actually build a virtual team, borderless office, different countries, mm. if one wants. Well, have to use you as a case study. Uh, well, we're, well, we're, in this, we're all in an office, though. We're all in an office. I yeah, mean, we, yeah. you know, we have a business where people feed off each other. Mm. Um, you know, it's kind of a sales-based environment. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice to work together. I do still, f I feel like for all the talk of like work-life balance, which I always find funny because the opposite opposite of life is death, and people equate. <laughs> Work very, to very, death. very poetic, that look. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I wrote that earlier. Yeah. Um, but um, so all that means is that people want to work from home, yeah. which means you have less human contact. Yeah. And people need to have human contact. They want to feel part of a tribe. And, and you don't if you're at home. No. You can literally go for like, it's not helping. I know that it's, it's, we get a lot of members who are home based workers. I say about 20, 30% of our businesses are home based. Um, and it's it's a lonely experience. It really is. And you see, you know, people that come to our networking events. We've got like local networking events, um, and they go for that kind of community aspect to be able to speak to people. You know, and hear, you can hear the the, the kind of the, the stories from other people in your similar shoes because you can't explain it to people who are in office. It's, you've got to hear it from other people who are experiencing that that element of loneliness, like you are as well. So it's so important that you've got local areas, and local communities, which is why organisations like like this where we're in kind of these co-work space where if you're looking to grow out of your, your bedroom, say, it's very it's a good way of, of, of kind of engaging with other people in your particular field. So why do you think so many people want to work from home? It might be a lifestyle kind of choice. Um, it, you know, it might suit them. But at the same time, what, if you're faced with a situation where you're going to be paying five, six thousand pounds in rent and rates, or you set up from home, what are you going to do? No, you know, absolutely. It's, and that's, it comes down to a cost, you know, that, that is, you know, it's the, the main element is the fact of how do you reduce your expenses, reduce, reduce, reduce your outgoings, yeah. and a third of ton of turnover goes on rent and rates. How can you do that? It's out from home. Yeah. Um, is that right, a third? Yeah, the average yeah. we see amongst members is a third of rent, you know, turnover is going yeah. on rent and rates. Yeah. Um, and, we, you know, we use, you'll see we've got kind of, we put out a, a kind of a, Bit of a splash media thing last week that said the kind of a rent and rates freedom day is now about April fifteenth, April twentieth, when you stop paying money to the uh, on your rent and rates, and it's 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 getting worse and worse. So we just have to find ways to support um, businesses, particularly with the cost of doing business. Tough, it's tough. It is, but worth thing. Is that my phone? Mine. <laughs> <laughs>
we'll, we'll, we'll let, let's shut it off and then. So how are your, um, got the phone off finally. How are your <laughs> members feeling about uh, Brexit? Um, there's been, ever since I, I've been asking them, since the day we decided to leave, there's been that kind of stoicism. We just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll rock through it. We'll get on with it. We'll, 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 we'll roll as we need to. And we'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get through it. Um, and I haven't heard anything else, you know, different really. I mean, for them, there's still that level of uncertainty. And when there was that uncertainty regarding whether or not people who are working here from the EU are allowed to stay here, but now there's a little bit more clarity on that, that's well, well received. I think having the certainty regarding things like the transitionary period after for two years, very important for small businesses. Um, now, most of these small businesses and micro businesses focused on the UK. Um, like they're deriving most of their business from the UK, or um, yeah, in the in the main, yes. But if they the the countries they are engaging with most are EU countries, so that's right, where they okay, export fine. the most to. Yeah. Um, so we do need to have a, a greater drive to be able to be in a position where we can start to look at ways to export with other parts of of the of the, of, of the world that maybe they haven't thought of in the past. Um, but I think again, a lot more needs to be done in terms of how our ambassadors set up abroad are supporting. Um, ambassadors being what that are, so, you know, that are there in terms of how we're engaging with the Department for International Trade, right. selling the UK, selling our product you know, abroad to, to kind of get support and, and help businesses who maybe have never been on a... So how, as a business, how would you get involved? How would you get that kind of support? Well, I think looking at areas like Department for International Trade and London and Partners, looking at those particular areas, but finding a way to think about going on things like trade missions. Very and the it's government used to do, for a small there is, but then there's before you know Brexit happened and we had UKTI there was kind of these ninety nine pound packages really subsidised wow. to get small businesses abroad for two to three days to parts of things like Turkey for instance or just right. you know parts of Eastern Europe um, to be able to to go on trade missions and go to to, to conferences abroad or and to actually sell their wares because. If we can kind of support them in those shorts, you know, it, it could be very beneficial. So I think there's more that can be done by the Department of International have you been, Trade. Have you been lobbying them on We on have that? been done, yeah, you have been doing so, yes. Is there an appetite from them? I think there is. Um, I think so. Um, they need to find innovative ways to be able to get our members to look to export. Um, okay. And for, for, you know, businesses... And this in, is outside of Europe? This is outside of the yeah outside of the EU. It's going to be important because they need to you know it's, they still want to you know have that kind of relationship with the EU, but we you know need to think further afield. Absolutely. Um, but I think the other area is the issue of getting talent. Uh, I don't know if that you know that's going to be an issue for your business in particular, getting the right talent. Um, so what what are the issues that they're finding? Not being able to hire the right people. Well, I think there's the problems they've had with the thing like non-EU migrants coming in has been the difficulty in getting. Um, visas, particularly tier two visas, into things like you know, restaurants with maybe say your, your Indian, your specialist, um, you know, Bangladeshi caterers, for instance, or people in the IT sector, people you need over that specialist the tier knowledge. Two, the tier two visa stuff's been tough since the financial crisis. So the government, I think, half the amount of visas they have done. But so you need to be firstly, you need to be um, registered as a firm yeah. to support visas. Mm. So we actually had we wanted to hire an Australian yeah. uh, Australian guy. Um, but we're not the type of firm that would be able to get no. um, uh, an, um, a license to sponsor. You wouldn't. And, and the problem is I've had businesses call me up in real niche kind of businesses, craft businesses, just saying they're completely, they've completely struggled to get those non-EU migrants into the country where they need to get that talent. And the fear is if we don't get that, that, that migration system that works effectively for non-EU migrants, how are we going to do the same for EU? So it's important that we learn lessons of what's worked well and what hasn't worked well from the current, you know, you know, migration Are they working system. on that? Because we you don't hear much about it. It's you all about again um, EU Brexit. I know, but you it, it needs it needs to be dealt with because you know we need to know what kind of whether it's going to be a point based system, whether it's going to operate like it does in some Scandinavian countries, how it's going to operate because they, again that certainty to be able to know that you're going to you be in a position where you can employ the best talent from across the world, so important for business. Hugely, no, hugely. Mm. Well, Which particularly you, in your field, I mean, it's, it's no, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, we are, um, yeah, I mean, we're doing a lot of Brexit recruitment. Yeah, um, we hire for firms setting up in Europe. Uh, also, European firms wanting to do business here. Um, the visa issue specifically, though, is a tough one. Mm. I mean, if you want to hire, if a firm wants to hire someone uh, and they need a visa, they have to advertise a role for a month, prove that they can't fill it with someone who's eligible to work here. Yeah. So it's quite tough. Yeah, it's quite tough. For there's a shortage um, list that the kind of migration, this is really 
geeky. Migration mm. Advisory Council has a kind of a shorted list that works for the UK and Scotland as well. We think there should be one in London, whereby if, if you know London in particular needs talent from abroad, we should have the, where there's a shortage list, we should be able to get the talent we need quicker um, using a system that's set up by kind of the Migration Advisory Council. But interesting to see if people still want to come here, given. The current. I, I still, I, I still think there's a it's, a, it's a draw to come over. There's, there's of course uncertainty, but it's, I, I, I I'm kind of maybe an optimist. I still think there's going to be enough um, that want make people will still want to come and make the, the transition to come to work in the in the UK. I think so. Yeah, you've got I to be positive. So. Be interesting to see about whether whether your members have employees that are European oh, who wanted to go back. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, there are some, and you, you will hear that. Of course, you will. Yeah. Um, but a lot will still say, you know, they want to stay in, you know, with the fact that they, they know there's, there's that right to remain. Absolutely. That's great. Um, but I, I, we just mustn't discount the people that still want to come to the UK who want to um, provide the skills that we so desperately need. Um, and, you know, businesses cry out for they, they struggle. Some of them struggle to get the talent that they need from the UK. So they look further afield because that's where they can get the talent and we want to make sure that happens. Or they can hire them as apprentices. Train them up, and we can do uh, some is, yeah, grain there. Quite right, which we've always advocated as well, but we do need... We do, no, we do. We all, do. All, all measures, really. Hugely. Changing the subject slightly. Go on. What do you think of the, uh, the soft drinks levy? That's a real, that's a real <laughs> switch. It's a big switch. Real switch. It's a big, switch. It? big switch. I'm very into my uh, healthy eating and all this kind of stuff. I can see. You're and there's... Uh, in the business. Well, not bad, not bad. And, um, bad back you got there. I've got a bit of a bad back, that's true, but that's just age yeah. <laughs> messing with me. <laughs> um, I think I'm probably in better shape now than I was at uni. We went to university well, together. We did, we did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember what shape you were like at university. Mm. I remember you had a fast serve at tennis. I, I did have a It never went in, but it was a fast serve. No, it never went in, it never went in. I always tired myself out because I was trying yeah. to put too much speed in it. Yeah, it was, that was, you needed that, that kind of balance, but yeah. But I do. But yeah. I think since we've been at uni, which was about 16 years ago, yeah. Uh, there's been like a big like health shift. It really has. Yeah, um, yeah. Certainly on like, all like the sugary drinks and all this mm. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so the government are introducing a soft drinks levy. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure what the numbers are. I'll probably click through on the old laptop and find out. Um, but it's interesting. So uh, that's one way of discouraging people putting the prices up. Yeah. But I think there's a big thing that we need to do on education. So parents not feeding their kids fizzy drinks, chocolates, all this kind of stuff. Um, and I think the government can do a lot more to educate people on healthy eating. Because yeah. obviously obesity, diabetes, biggest strain in the NHS, yep. which is very topical it, at the yeah. moment. We mustn't single out one particular area, though. I think that's important. The fact of the matter is that we have, all have a responsibility in this particular area. Right? That my personal opinion is it's government, business, parents, even kids as well. You know, all you know, realising the dangers that, you know, more sugar, soft drinks, you know, the sugary snacks have on our, you know, on our, you know, so bottom line, so you know, and the, you know, beastie issues. Beastie is a you know massive killer in the UK, and it's Huge. it's something that's have you know, have a big strain on the NHS, um, and it it takes away you know from other areas that we need we need to be concentrating on. So I do you know I do pers from a personal perspective, um, I think it's a, it's a responsibility of all of us really. Are you quite strict with your kids? I try to be. Um, I'm, you know, I'm I'm I think I'm more bad cop than than my partner, but I just think. Um, it's, what, it's bad cop as in you give them. No, no, I think, no, I'm the other, I'm the other way around, really. I don't know a sweet tooth, but I, it's hard. You, know, you work, you know, people these day and age, you work, you know, not not only two, you know, two people working. You know, you get back late. Yeah. Um, it's you know, it's, it's tiring. So it's, 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 it's tiring and hard to make like food from it scratch. Is, it is, and I'm as guilty as the next person. Yeah. It's hard to, but and you know, when you've got kids who just you know all they do is seeing adverts on the TV from. You know this. You know this brand of sugar company. This, you know, pizza place, and this, you know, what, whatever. Um, it's hard to be able to say no. It's, it's, it's. it's and you're going to get, you know, and that's. But it's also it comes, it's you, also you have to. The thing is, it's also readily available here. It is. You it's can go so down easy. to Sainsbury's. You can go to Tesco, whatever it is. Um, and there's so much choice. Um, you can. It's actually almost. It's also. It's hard to eat healthy. It's also more expensive it, it to be is. healthy. No, it definitely is. It definitely is. So we just need we we need to flip that. I don't know what the answer is, but you know, you, you see Jamie Oliver constantly on on TV and radio, but the need to start to reduce the cost of uh, fruit and veg and more well, veg in particular. But they do, they do. Yeah, but we'll see. 
We'll see. We'll see. Um, it's an interesting one. Awesome. <laughs> so, thank you very much for coming. That's all right. What a way to end. Great way to end. <laughs> Positive. And thank you healthy. for letting me be the first. You're the first. Just, the first, the last. We'll everything. have you, no, no, we'll have you back on the podcast next time. Great. That's and awesome. um, have an awesome Easter. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye. Hey folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places.